Hi guys, Elias here. I have a new unboxing uh, for you today. It's the Corsair Hydro Series H110 GT uh, H110 IGT cooler. It's an all-in-one uh, cooler for your CPU. Uh, it's one of the latest generations of Corsair uh, Hydro Series and uh, it's one of two, the top uh, range. Uh, the second one is uh, H110i GTX and the main difference between these two coolers is uh, that uh, you know they utilize different uh, cooler itself uh, by a different brand. Um, so uh, this is the box, it's, the design is similar to the all uh, other all-in-one series, Hydro series from Corsair, nothing changed. Uh, the box is uh, black and red uh, themes with the cooler on itself. This one is a 140 millimeter dual radiator, uh, which is made of uh, purely aluminum, as opposed to some other brands that are releasing now with uh, copper uh, radiators. For example, the EK Waterblocks Predator, uh, the, the 240 and uh, 360 series which uh, recently uh, were recently released, but I also made a video about that one. But the problem with those coolers that uh, EK Waterblocks makes, which uh, by the way makes great separate components for uh, custom water cooling uh, setups. But the problem with uh, their new series is that they released a product which had a problem with the, an O-ring and I got that radiator. Uh, I made the video and I was uh, going to make a test uh, to share benchmarks with you, but uh, then uh, they recalled the product. I had to send it back and because it took them uh, almost four weeks to sort out the things and they did not uh, send me a new one. Uh, so it's, it's a very bad customer service that I had with them and um, I decided to switch back to Corsair. So whether it's important for you or not, uh, as they say in uh, IT world, if something works, you don't have to change it. So Corsair worked for me flawlessly all those years without, you know, promoting their products. I, they never paid me anything or, you know, sent me any free stuff. Uh, I'm buying every piece uh, of uh, hardware that I'm uh, reviewing. So um, I went back to Corsair to test their product, which uh, never failed on me. So um, this is one of them. Enough uh, talking, let's open it up, see what we have inside. As usual, you have the manual and uh, the setup, the warranty card. Okay. Then we have the radiator, the fans, and some other equipment which we are going to review in a second. It comes in a paper uh, shell like this one, nothing else is there. Let's put it aside and see what we have in the box. So let's leave the radiator for a second. We have some brackets here because this cooler is made for almost any socket that is available either from Intel or AMD, uh, including the AM1, AM2, AM3, as well as uh, all known and latest uh, sockets from Intel, for example, the 1150, 1151, um, the 1156, 2011, 2011, revision three, it supports all of them. And you have the brackets for uh, your motherboard's backside and uh, front side as well. All the screws that you might need to secure your cooler on your motherboard. This is a, uh, USB, micro USB to USB to header, uh, because this cooler comes with Corsair Link software. So you can um, actually connect your cooler to your operating, to your motherboard and through your operating system through dedicated Corsair Link software, you can manage uh, the RPM of your fans, of these two 140 RPM fans, which actually um, I wanted to share some specs with you. Um, you can also change the speed of the pump, so you can either make it more silent or more efficient if you are overclocking. For those people who prefer uh, 
more silent operation, then you can switch it more to more silent operation and uh, you won't be hearing it and uh, have a very decent cooling. So these are very large fans from Corsair, which um, usually the larger the fan, uh, the, uh, the lower are the RPMs that it's turning on uh, with. So it means that uh, if the 120 millimeters are turning with around 2,500 RPMs, these are, are going to turn with uh, 2,000 plus minus 10% RPM. Uh, uh, this one actually is uh, uh, maximum is 2,100 RPMs plus minus 10% as opposed to uh, H110GTX, uh, which has 2000 uh, plus minus 10% RPMs, which means that uh, these turn 10% faster than 5% uh, faster than those of uh, GTX uh, cooler, which makes it uh, 3 dB louder, uh, which is not noticeable because uh, the GTX uh, is 40 dB and this one is 43. The difference is not that significant but uh, as a general this cooler is a bit cheaper but I believe that uh, it's a better choice to to get um, because they are not uh, delivering any difference in performance and uh, it's just different uh, manufacturer who is supplying Corsair with uh, parts so why not get the one that is more affordable and uh, has no uh, performance difference whatsoever and uh, the airflow that they have actually um, is uh, is the same and the static pressure that these two fans uh, create because when you have a radiator you don't need uh, higher you don't need higher volume of air uh, going through but you need fans that uh, can uh, keep up with static pressure which means that uh, the air will be can uh, this can work harder and better against uh, you know the radiator because it's not a free uh, airflow there is an obstacle in front of them and they need static pressure to be able to create static uh, airflow through an obstacle so, um, and this radiator is slightly bigger than the one of uh, GTX. Um, this one is one uh, 312 millimeters, uh, 322 millimeters long, 27 millimeters thick, and uh, 140 millimeters wide, which is the size of the fan that we have here. Uh, you can uh, have them either in, um, in, in, in push, in push this way, or in pull this way. So if you want uh, to have push and pull as well, and your clearance in mother uh, above your motherboard on or front of the of your case or, or any other place on your case, if you have enough clearance, then you can add two more 40 to 140 millimeter uh, fans, and it's going to be uh, uh, just fine. Uh, the thickness of uh, the fans are two, is 25 millimeters. So if you consider the 27 millimeters of uh, your radiator and 25 this, uh, it comes to 52 millimeters uh, altogether. And if you add another fan, it's going to be uh, 77 millimeters thick. So you need to consider that uh, distance to make sure that you have enough clearance. Um, the pump is integrated in here on this CPU block. Uh, the paste is pre-applied, so uh, you don't need to apply any paste on your CPU or here because it's pre-applied. Some might want to remove it and add their own uh, paste. If you believe uh, you need something better, you can you can apply. Corsair is usually supplying a decent uh, paste, so uh, no need to remove it. Um, Corsair link here, then you have two fan headers here, uh, CPU uh, fan header which is, you need to add to your motherboard and then you have a power supply, SATA power cable which you need to connect to your power supply to, to get enough power. And it's uh, nicely fabriced, uh, the tubes are not very thick but they are nicely fabriced uh, to eliminate any heat 
um, you know, coming from other components and uh, affecting the uh, temperature or destroying the tubes in a long, uh, long run. So uh, this is about it. Um, there is nothing else to say about uh, this cooler apart from uh, it being, you know, uh, well, well tested plas platform and uh, delivering nice um, results. Results will be with it after my uh, talking. Uh, so you can uh, share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Let me know what you think about uh, this cooler, if you have any experience with it. Let us know what you think. Subscribe for more video videos because, because we're constantly uh, upgrading our systems, uh, making new videos, uh, bringing new stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye now.